on that homestand against LIU's rivals in the NEC, Merrimack, CCSU, Sacred Heart, and St. Francis, Brooklyn. We are ready to go. Ty Flowers taking the opening tip. Again, 6'9", 225, Darius Henderson. Only played 16 minutes in the loss at UMass Tuesday night. Still finished with eight points and five rebounds. And wins it convincingly back to Owens, who will play the point. He and Agosto both wear the number three. And for the first time here in Brooklyn, Vershawn Cotton's on the floor. Those bright neon shoes. Left open in the corner, Noel. Left it short, and Flowers has his first board. LIU trying to push the pace. Cotton wide open. And Owens got to the rebound. Vershawn in his debut, seven points, five rebounds, did turn it over five times. Lutete. Just like Noel left it short. Great move by Agosto, and as he drove in, Owens got a hand on. Agosto, fourth in the conference, each of the last two years in minutes per game, just around 34. He averaged around five assists per game a season ago, good for second in the NEC. And his 10 assists on Tuesday night at URI, one off his career high. Never got a breather on Tuesday, played all 40 minutes. First touch for Clark, and ran into a wall. It's knocked out by Josh Gantz. So Raekwon Clark, who has become one of the best players in program history. Not bad for a guy that walked on during the fall semester of his freshman year. Flowers with the height mismatch on Gantz. Goes out to Clark. And he took one too many steps. That's something you need to monitor with Raekwon. He'll have his turnovers. And usually it's on those plays where he looks to penetrate and then stops on the dime. Sharks watch tape from Tuesday night. Bringing pressure early on. Something that the Riverhawks had a tough time with on Tuesday. Owens forced it inside. Two on one, Agosto and Batch. Jay Sean takes it and got knocked down hard. Gantz was back and we're scoreless for the first minute 25. Lutete threw the arm out and it's an offensive foul. Opened up the season with a double-double against the Minutemen for the second straight season. 17 points, 13 rebounds on Tuesday night. Last season became the first Riverhawk to notch a double-double in a Division I debut. Augusto lobs for Clark. Raekwon using every angle, and it's fitting that he's the first one to score here at home. Flowers with the hands. What a play from Ty. And there's the full court press. Posing problems for UMass Lowell. That's a long one from Henderson. And all three triples have been ugly. What a pass. A ghost throw to Clark. And just like that. Pat Duquette needs a timeout less than two and a half minutes in. Tough start throughout who they are. So they're going to focus on themselves more so than LIU and maybe LIU being a little shorthanded. He said he doesn't want to throw too much at his guys this early in the season. Minor adjustments for now. Things that as they get deeper, they'll work on a little bit more. But you see here the problems they're having with the press. And the biggest culprit's been Jordan Owens. That's a pretty good take. The follow-up falls for Noel. Gantz got the first shot off. And after missing on their first five, the Riverhawks are finally on the board. Gantz the most experienced player out there. Some room for Agosto, bottom of the screen. Clark leans. And that's really hard to defend. Six quick ones. For Raekwon Clark. Owens lines it up. Nobody got out. 
And that's another miss off of three. And how about Flowers with rebound number five. Goes to Clark and nobody gets to him. Owens standing right near him. Threw his arms out looking for the help. And the Sharks have opened it up early. Touch pass Noel. Finally gets one down. After the Riverhawks missed on their first four threes. So Noel, who led the Riverhawks with 18 in Tuesday night's loss, finished 7 for 14 from the field. Really upped his game last season with his field goal percentage going from 40% to over 51%. Good for third in the America East. Nice adjustment from Flowers. Goes with his off right hand. And a chance at a three-point play. The foul on Gantz, his first. And the River Hawks third. And with bats coming out, our first look at Ashton Bradley. Who was one of three players in the NEC with 21 points. He led the Sharks on opening night. Flowers takes care of it. And that gives them five points with those five rebounds. Sharks have made six of their first eight. And another issue for Owens with Flowers hounding him. Jordan Owens being led around like a puppy right now. And the Riverhawks, who have already called a timeout, turn it over for the third time. Flowers a three. And Noel to the uncontested board. They call him Obi. And Cotton reached in too far. First foul against LIU. And that sends us to our first media timeout. 4.06 gone by. Sharks by eight. Fast start for the Sharks. An eight point lead. On six of eight shooting at the outset. Three early turnovers plus a timeout from UMass Lowell. And they've made a couple of changes out of the first media timeout. Connor Withers, the freshman in it forward. And Lutete going to the outside where Noel has his second three. So Noel has all eight points. And the Riverhawks getting them some good looks early on. Sharks having an easy time working on this zone. Augusto's got a lane. Realized he had room with his right. And Jay Sean scores on his first. Look at Bradley on the follow-up. The Sharks capitalize on the fourth Riverhawks turnover. And it was Flowers putting it down with Bradley nearby helping with the pressure. So Flowers now with his second three-point play. And that gives him eight. He and Clark sharing the team lead. And for the first time here in the first, LIU leads by ten. Lutete looking for his first point. Sharks now going with a hybrid 3-2. Noel takes it inside. Mitchell up and under. Went a little too far. That's Ron Mitchell, the freshman. And for the second time, the Sharks turn it over. Lutete spots up. And that's another three. Four field goals for the Riverhawks. Three from downtown. And that's the first bucket for Lutete. Became the first Riverhawk to be an NABC All-District 1 first-team selection a year ago. Cotton, quick shovel, poked out last by Withers. Christian also led the America East Conference with 10 double-doubles. He and Josh Gans, the two grad students. For an otherwise young team, you look at the key reserves coming into this season for Pat Duquette. Most of them are underclassmen. Clark step back, same as before. He hits it again. Raekwon, a perfect five for five. 
Lutete working on him. Nice crossover. Great adjustment. And he switched it up perfectly. That's five in a row for Christian. Only two scorers so far for the Riverhawks. Sharks getting most of theirs from Clark and Flowers. They've combined on 18. Bradley on with Cotton. Sharks running out of time. Vershawn just missed. Riverhawks working a little bit faster now. And it was 23 on 23 crime with Lutete drawing the foul on Clark. Now we get another substitution for Derek Kellogg. Jermaine Jackson Jr. One of the transfers from Detroit Mercy, fellow sophomore Jack Ballantyne is at the end of the bench next to Julian Batts. So the first action of the season for the young men. Got bumped off the screen. What a drop off. Noel got it down low, but Withers wasn't ready. Jackson, a little guy, five foot ten. Being guarded by Noel at six four. And a whistle signals a foul on Ron Mitchell. So you're seeing some freshmen early on, something that we talked about quite a bit last season with Derek Kellogg, his willingness to open things up for his reserves. Something that he didn't do as frequently in year one in Brooklyn. Clark, perfect from the field, trying to keep it going, and why not? That's a triple. That's the first one for LIU, and Raekwon Clark's got 13. Lutete at the other end. Couldn't have scripted a better start for Raekwon Clark. He's already approaching his 29th career game with at least 20. His efficiency last season, 50% from the field, good for sixth. Also 10th in minutes. Here's a ghost though, the workhorse, got stripped on the way in. It'll stay with LIU. Sharks have knocked down 10 of their first 15. Clark, seven for seven. 15 points. And everything that UMass Lowell's thrown at him has been brushed aside. Withers with room. Touches it home. That's his second field goal after hitting his one shot on Tuesday. Jackson with a little confidence here. Got the switch. Agosto has that burst. Still time for the Sharks. With Clark now being guarded by Josh Gantz. Jackson runs out of room. Tip to Flowers. That's a lot of steps and a feverish jam. The Riverhawks were looking for the travel, but Ty Flowers said, forget about it. I want 10. We get a travel, this one on Mitchell. And the Sharks continue this incredible run in the first. It's a 12 point lead with 11 and a half. Raekwon Clark with 15, Ty Flowers with 10. And a 12-point lead for the Sharks, their largest of this first. That's a push-off on Clark. Right in front of the official. And guilty of his second foul. So no need in keeping him out there. And risk him picking up a third. He comes out. And look who's in. The seven-footer from Senegal, Usman Deem. Who always gets a nice hand whenever he enters the ball game, but he's got to get out and defend down the middle. Withers with his second bucket. 
And suddenly Withers, the third scorer for the Riverhawks with four. Bradley, quick trigger. Left it short, Withers to the board. So Withers making an impact in just his second game. Mitchell got it to Noel. He's hit a couple of threes. And a whistle on Jackson. Derek Kellogg didn't realize it. Jackson was providing good pressure on Noel, but a little too much. And now the Sharks have four fouls. Five on UMass Lowell. Lutete with Bradley in front of him. Batch just checked back. Withers for three. Tap back to him. There's Darren Lutete to go right. Instead, he keeps it left. Good hand by Flowers. And he pokes it out of bounds. That's another area where Ty Flowers, aside from his offensive contributions last season, he was also fourth in the conference with 44 block shots. You combine that with Eral Penn, LIU actually led the NEC in rejections a year ago. Penn inactive tonight in street clothes, but barking out, supporting his team at the end of the bench. Noel forced it, got it off. And Flowers collects his seventh rebound. You can see the sweat trickling down the back of his neck. He's worked hard in the early going. Bottom of the screen, bats on the rotation. Look at Jackson from a long way out. And Noel got to the rebound. That's his third. Both teams with nine. Off the bench, Allen Blunt. With Deem getting down to deny him. Blunt as a freshman last year got in for 31 games. And was a little too aggressive on Tuesday night. He fouled out in 16 minutes in Amherst. Sharks have led by as many as 12. What a shot from Lutete. And that's his second three. He and Noel with eight points. Under Derek Kellogg, the Sharks have played a lot of close ones. Six and seven last year in games decided by five or less. Nine and five. Roughly half their games two seasons ago. And now we get an offensive foul on Usman. Who is getting a little too handsy on the inside. That's a quick shift for the big fella. Jack Ballantyne enters for the first time as a shark. He and Vershawn Cotton back in together. Augusto sitting out for now. Clark taking a seat with two fouls. And the Riverhawks hoping to close the gap. Just about nine to play. Noel, long one. And a hand on bats. That's two free throws for OB Noel. Where he was 72% a season ago. Bats was contending that he got kicked by Noel. He was saying there was very minimal contact. And Derek Kellogg probably echoing the similar sentiment along that sideline. His entire coaching staff back and intact. Marlon Williamson, Jim Mack, Ralph Oriental, and Matthew Vogel. Split pair for Noel. He's stuck on nine. Jackson. Falling. Tip to Flowers. Now Ty going in hot. And he missed a good chance with his right. Noel looking for help. Riverhawks appear to have found their footing after a brutal start. And now it's Cotton with a blocking foul, his second. So 
So Vershawn coming out. Waiting for the okay with Augusto on his way back. Cotton, who was here last season, had to sit out after the transfer from Akron. Where he played in 28 games as a freshman. I'm trying to make sure that they have the number of fouls correct up on the scoreboard. It reads five, but by my count, LIU should have seven. And there, that's what they were trying to get right. That leads to a one and one for Lutete. The grad student gets a second free throw. Nine teams in the America East. Riverhawk shot 72% as a team last season, good for fifth. Riverhawks have scored the last eight. They've capitalized with Clark nursing two fouls on the bench. Flowers through the double screen. Bats first shot. Valentine tapped it. And he gets called for an offensive foul. Valentine was fighting off two Riverhawks and reached over the top. And that's number eight against LIU. Free throws coming for Allen Blunt. Who shot 42% in 13 minutes per game last season. The young man from Crownsville, Maryland. Valentine jumped in. Flowers poked around. Riverhawks get another shot. They control with eight minutes left. Noel with the runner. Give him 11. And just like that, the Riverhawks have made it a two-point game. Jackson pushed back. That's a travel. A little extra step to get himself beyond the arc. And the Sharks turn it over for the fifth time, sending us to the meaty 10-0 run. From the second to third media timeout, a chance at their first lead in this first half. And Derek Kellogg keeping the same five out there, although he did send the sophomore Jermaine Jackson to the bench. Augusto back in. And Lutete lets it fly. So quick off the dribble, and he's got 13 to give the Riverhawks their first lead. All Raekwon Clark can do is watch with two fouls. Bats lost the grip on it. And the half has shifted here after LIU went ahead 27 to 15. Augusto on Noel. Double team to Latete. Someone's open. And it's a travel on Thomas. Khalil Thomas, first time we call his name out, he's guilty of a walk. First ever game for the freshman. Did not play on Tuesday against the Minutemen. Tara Kellogg's old stomping grounds up in Amherst. And that was something, too, when you look at these coaches, similar in age. They're both from Massachusetts. They both used to run into each other on the recruiting trail back when Derek was an assistant for John Calipari at Memphis. Bradley looking to get on. And it rattles to Flowers. Second effort's there. Ty Flowers cleaning up on the glass. 12 points and 9 rebounds in the first half with plenty of time to go. Noel 
with contact from Flowers. There it is. Rebound number 10 and a double-double. Agosto behind the back. A little too quick for Ballantyne. Three on two for the Riverhawks. Noel, nice selection. He and Lutete with 13. Bats, pace opening up. Rebound there, Agosto to Flowers. Yo, no, so close. One more time, Ty. Around and out. And the Sharks just can't buy one from downtown. They are now one for ten from three. And of all people, it's Clark who's got the lone triple. It'll stay with the River Hawks with just under five and a half. Ty Flowers already has his 10th double-double with 12 points and 10 rebounds. Thank goodness he has not picked up a foul yet. One more would get UMass Lowell into the double bonus. Gantz missed the turnaround. Riverhawks on the attack, and Noel's there to push it back in. Valentine rejected by Gantz. The Sharks need a stop. Noel. Ballantyne leveraging to get the rebound. It's a 19-4 run in the last seven and a half minutes. Ballantyne forced it, tapped it to Flowers, and he stepped on the end line. It's River Hawks ball, and Ron Mitchell on his way back in for UMass Lowell. Both teams have now turned it over seven times. Great ball movement. Thomas rejected by Flowers. That's his third block shot. Agosto tangled up. And they get Mitchell with the foul. That's his second. Raekwon back in. Agosto gets it to Bradley. Bradley scoreless so far. Flowers draws a lot of attention. Tipped out. Last touch by Bradley. Yeah, he could do all the acting and all the selling that he wants, but it was obvious. That ball glanced off him on the way out. So Bradley, who led the Sharks with 21 on Tuesday, taking more of a back seat in this one. Gantz drops it off. Not a good pass, but deflected out to Thomas. He got tangled up, and Bradley trips him up. And that's the second on Bradley, the third Shark with two personal fouls. And Thomas, the young man from New Orleans, at the line. So as Pat Duquette said, a young team, a team that he feels confident in, strongly about, He had a vision for this program when he accepted the job six years ago, but also pointed out that vision usually changes about 14 times. His words during the course of each season. His team fell behind by 12 early in this first half. Now they lead by three. Jackson's been busy in this first half. The sophomore up top. Clark. Stays perfect. Eight for eight, 17 points in his final season debut. Off the dribble, tough shot. It wouldn't go for Mitchell. That's bats from straight away, and it gives the Sharks the lead. 
Just their second three-pointer. Mitchell attacks again. This time he puts it in. But that's the other thing from Tuesday night. The Sharks only hit 11 shots in both halves. They've made 15 in this first half. 44 of their 68 shots came from three. By far the highest total to start year three under Derek Kellogg. Jackson tried forcing it down low. It was poked away by Gantz. More room for Mitchell. The spin move and the rejection by Flowers. Mitchell lost control. And that'll get us to the final stoppage. The final scheduled stoppage of this first half. Deadlocked at 34. The Sharks and Riverhawks wrap. Greg Caserta back with you for the final two and a half minutes of this first half. A couple of really impressive performances from Noel and Lutete. As well as Flowers and Clark. Bats in the lane. And Julian's got five in the last couple of minutes. It's been a back and forth first half. Lutete. Was trying to follow it up. One addition to the River Hawks rotation is Luca Mazia Shvili. Good luck saying that one. Luca, a freshman from the country of Georgia. Bats working on Lutete. Flowers on the freshman Withers. Got the pick and roll he wanted. Clark takes it all the way. Rejected by Gantz. That's the first time Gantz has had an answer for Clark. And now the Riverhawks can take a three right here and go ahead. Instead, it's Jackson to the rebound. Swing pass, tip to bats. Flowers pushed around. Derek Kellogg wanted a whistle, didn't get it. Noel shovels. Lutete ties it at 36. Lutete and Noel with 15 for the Riverhawks. Agosto got away with a dangerous pass. And then Maziashvili reached over the top of Bats. One and one for Julian. 85% at the line a year ago. It was nice to see him knock down those three threes in the last Tuesday at URI. He did not have more than three in a game until the season-ending loss to St. Francis U in the NEC semifinals. They're hoping that Bats can rediscover that outside touch from his sophomore year. His three-point shooting was down to just 32% last year. Jay Sean Agosto, his number fell even further to 25%. I'll need the two of them to do a little bit better than that in their final seasons. Noel, great ball movement. Lutete gets the foul and one. He waited for Flowers to leave his feet. And Ty Flowers, first personal, gets Lutete to the line where he's got a chance at 18 points. It's been that kind of half. Noel and Lutete both 6 for 10. Jackson, good pass. Flowers for three. And the Sharks' struggles from downtown continue. They've missed 11. That might have been tipped on the way up. Either way, Riverhawks get it back. About three seconds between the shot clock and the game clock. A 
Noel looking to ISO Jackson. Good footwork. Noel pushes off and puts it in. Last chance for the Sharks. A whistle waves off the shot. And it's coming back the other way. Bats and Agosto were a little bit hurried up the sideline. Let's see if they add some time back to the clock. Right now it reads 1.3. And after those early struggles, and I hate to pinpoint one particular Riverhawk, but once Jordan Owens came out of the game and Connor Withers went on that little run, the offense started to pick things up a little bit. Because if you remember early on, the Riverhawks were having a really tough time with LIU's press. And they got over that early hump, and while they'd like to spread the scoring out a lot more, well shot. And Jackson was looking to take off and run. The Tete, the target, wants it, doesn't get it. Withers rejected by Flowers. His fifth block shot closes out a very entertaining first half. If you came out to see offense, you saw plenty of it from Raekwon Clark, Ty Flowers, Obi Noel, and Christian Lutete. The tag team match continues when we come back. We'll step aside for a few moments and get you set for the last 20 minutes. Riverhawks are racing early 12-point hole, and they lead the Sharks by three on front row. Beginning next weekend with the Riverhawk Invitational, the Sharks have a long ways away before their next home game. They won't be back until December 20th, so nearly a month and a half in between home games, which will start a three-game homestand right before New Year's. Hopefully the Sharks can stay out of foul trouble. Our first whistle goes against the Riverhawks. And it was away from the basketball. That's on Connor Withers. And that was the other aspect of some of those changes and the adjustments that Pat Duquette made. Jordan Owens and Darius Henderson, who started the ball game, they both were kept on the bench for most of that first half. So the Riverhawks getting a little bit Frisky with their reserves. And now it's Owens starting this second half and getting called for the second foul in just 19 seconds. Henderson not out there. To begin the second, Connor Withers is. Augusto jams on the brakes. And keeps working in tandem with Flowers. Ty, that's a long one. And that's perfect. Tied at 41. Flowers missed his first four threes, but that one ties it at 41. Gantz quiet. He was scoreless in that first half, and Flowers fired up after picking up his sixth blocked shot. He's getting it done at both ends of the floor. Told you that he had 44 of them last year. How about number seven? But Withers is there for the follow-up. Ty Flowers has seven rejections. Augusto stayed low. Clark engages and gets the foul from Noel. Seven blocks for Ty Flowers, a new career high. He had five last season in a game against Sacred Heart. Can't think of too many guys. Keith Braxton would come to mind. But who else would have seven block shots in a single game for an NEC team? Ron Ratner, paging Ron Ratner. Dig into the vault. And the officials... Very whistle happy. That is four fouls against the Riverhawks in a minute 20. 
And that one on Gantz is second. Now the good news for the Riverhawks is that nobody has more than two. Same thing for LIU, but it's been quite the discrepancy coming out of halftime. Cotton a little too strong. Flowers to the rebound. Goes to Clark, and there it is. 19 for Raekwon. And Flowers just keeps piling on with 12 rebounds. Lutete stripped from behind. Slap back in by Cotton. Right to Lutete. And he's got 20. Oh, Raekwon, a little too much movement. And he turns it over for the third time. I will say Raekwon, playing composed, has to get out on Noel. Shark staring at the rebound. Bats got to it. And here's Flowers. Likes that spot. And Bats has to watch the hands. He bumped Gantz after he got to the rebound. Sharks just three of 16 from beyond the arc. Noel hit a couple of trades in the first. Nice move. Flowers was there. I don't know if he got a piece. Either way, a little too much off the window from Lutete. That was block number eight, by the way, for Ty Flowers. Cotton with another one. Yes. Sharks back in front. With Cotton finally hitting his first shot. Play is really opening up. Withers. Lutete, look at that rebound. Almost had an N1. Lutete getting up for just his third board. But he fought off a double team to get there. And this young man, every bit is advertised. The second team all-conference selection with 20 points after going for 17 and 13 on Tuesday night. Depending on what happens on Sunday against Ohio State, you could be looking at the first America East player of the week. According to Pat Duquette, his team jacked up for that trip out to Columbus, says it's a win-win because there are no expectations against a huge program like that. One of those rare times where they get to travel on a plane, makes them feel like big shots. That's a some pass from Cotton to Clark. Raekwon dives on top of it. Noel came on top of him. And it's going to be LIU ball. Raekwon put his case to the official. And Gantz asking for a word. Raekwon jumped on top of the loose basketball as it rolled towards the corner. Noel was right on top of him. And the Sharks have a chance at breaking the tie. That's an Augusto. Back in there. Jay Sean, that's unbelievable. Over the top of Withers. Just the second bucket for Jay Sean Augusto. Oh, that's just Lutete at his best. Scoring from every angle on the floor. He's got 23 points. And the offense is getting a lot of looks with the first media timeout coming up. Cotton the lean guard. Vershawn. Got it to Flowers off the deflection. He lays it in. First assist for Cotton. Lutete waits, goes up on Clark and just missed yet another and one opportunity. But Clark 
gets tagged with his fourth personal foul. And he is going to sit out for quite a bit of time here in the second half. Sharks by two. Four fouls. That means an early shift here in the second for sophomore Jack Ballantyne. Two shots coming for Christian. Who's single game high last season, 35 in the win at Hartford, the team that wound up eliminating them in the first round of the quarterfinals. Last year set the Division I record for wins under Pat Duquette. They were 15 and 17 overall, just 5 and 12 away from home. Let's see how the Sharks manage without Clark. Cotton using every move in his bag. Reset comes with five. Valentine lets it fly. Hey, Jack almost had it. And Lutete secures his fifth rebound. Connor Withers playing an impressive game. He's matched up with Ballantyne as the Sharks go back to the men. Noel spins in traffic, dumps it off, and it was a pretty good look for Mazi Ashvili. Mazi Ashvili. That's good. There's Ballantyne cashing in. Both teams with five triples. That's Ballantyne's first field goal. Stays with Lutete. Good switch for LIU. Noel off balanced. And the foul goes on Bats. That's his second. And the third against the Sharks. Noel so far, one for two. And despite all the fouls, not a whole lot of free throws. Riverhawks eight of 13. The Sharks four for four. And Alan Blunt just checked in for the Riverhawks. Sending Withers to the bench. And the back and forth continues. Riverhawks led 41-38 at the half. They trailed by three at halftime in the loss at URI, or excuse me, in the loss at UMass on Tuesday. Cotton falling away, and the double team tripped him up. The foul goes on Mazi Ashvili. And that's number five against UMass Lowell. Last season, the second straight year, the Riverhawks led the America East in scoring offense. They averaged just under 77 points per game. It was also the second time in three seasons they paced the conference in assists per game. We've seen a lot of offense in this one. Ballantyne picked up his dribble too soon. Gets it to Flowers, plants, and left it short. Gants to the rebound. And Lutete all the way for two. 27 for Christian. And another hand on Agosto for the second straight turn. It's on Luca Maziashvili. And the Riverhawks, who were very disciplined after a shoddy start in that first half, basically have a foul per minute since the second began. Bradley just checked in on the rotation. That gives Bats a breather. 
Bradley missed his two threes in the first. It's Cotton all the way with a little razzle-dazzle for the cameras. Vershawn's got all five points in this second half. Good hand by Augusto getting back to poke it away from Blunt. Tete, nice and easy. Just his sixth miss. And yet there are the Riverhawks getting it back, fresh off the bench. Withers too strong. Another second chance opportunity. Lutete stepped on the baseline. Third time, not a charm for the Riverhawks. And that last sequence, something we saw all too often from the Sharks last year. There were times in conference play here at home where they surrendered one too many offensive rebounds. Didn't bite them that time. They still lead by one. They keep the rotation on the outside. Ballantyne on the roll. Agosto got it to Cotton. And he took a step too soon. The entire bench for LIU in disbelief over the call. It's one thing when the players look stunned. It's another thing when all five coaches are scratching their heads as well. Sharks turn it over for the 12th time. Lutete, you bet. That's 30 points for Christian. Cotton. Redeems himself with a three. The near seating bowl is filled up. And it's getting louder with each bucket. Lutete rejected by Flowers. And I think they got him with a foul. That free hand got a little too close. And the fireworks are just beginning. 11.36 to play. It's been a really fun one between LIU and UMass Lowell. Is the third highest total of his career. I mentioned the 35 against Hartford last season. He also had a 34-point effort against Loyola. And two free throws coming after Ty Flowers was called for his second foul. Lutete... 10 of 16 from the field, 4 of 7 from beyond the arc. And with one more free throw coming, 7 for 8 at the line. What a start to this second half. Eight ties. And 11 lead changes in this game. And still a long time before we get to the end. Augusto, great pass. Cotton, the hot hand. And almost got that second roll. Lutete closing in on his second straight double-double. That was his sixth rebound. Gantz looking for him. Blunt off the dribble, and he banks it home. Flowers back out. And Lutete's got his seventh board. Steps into it, and left it short. Flowers returns the favor. That's 14 boards for Ty. Valentine touches. Cotton. He's looked a lot better in this second half. Off the bench, Jackson a little too strong. Jackson still looking to get on the board. He's missed his first four shots. 
three from deep. And for LIU, now six for 24 from downtown. Noel quiet in the second. Follows it up, tips it back out. Blunt down low, he finds Lutete. 34. And two away from a new career high. It's the largest lead in the second for the Riverhawks. Augusto, off balance, Gantz. Can't believe it. That's the second foul on Gantz, number seven uh, against the River Hawks, although Augusto does get two. 67% at the line just a year ago. So Jay Sean, as he's done his entire career, careful with the basketball and can't get either free throw. He's got four points, and Bats has seven. Give and go, and there's Gantz a little too much. He beat Ballantyne off the dribble, but just couldn't finish at the cup. Every time Cotton touches it, he's looking to make something happen. Ballantyne. Hey, now! Second three for Jack Ballantyne. One of the top forward recruits in the state of Michigan has hit a couple of big threes. Oh yeah, Lutete. That's 37 and a new career high. The Sharks cannot get the timely stop. Augusto shovels. Flowers sets for Agosto. Ballantyne. Athletic. Flowers. Nice turnaround. Jack Ballantyne making the most of his first game with the Sharks. Oh, Noel. Putting the moves on. Just could not get the roll. Ballantyne leading the break. Here comes Jack. Cotton for the tie. And Ballantyne turned around thinking that he had a celebration coming. Instead, he needs to hustle back on defense. Augusto on Lutete. It's an illegal screen. And Gantz got caught right in front of the official. That whistle stops the action with 7.31 to go. Who wants it more? We'll see when we come back. Riverhawks by three. Quan Clark stays on the bench with four personal fouls. But I'd imagine that he'd be coming in with just under five to play, maybe even outside of the final media timeout, depending on when that comes. Bats back in, giving Cotton a breather. Cotton looks a little bit gassed right now. Augusto, fortunate to have that pass deflected to Ballantyne. Jack kicks. He's looked sharp. The last few minutes. Sets the screen for Jackson. Finds Flowers looking for the tie. Can't get it. And for all the good Flowers has done, he has missed eight three-pointers. He's been much better inside the arc. He's seven for ten from two. Lutete had it played back. Here he goes. Ballantyne underneath, and it was knocked out last by Blunt. Here comes Clark. And Ballantyne's going to come out. Job well done, Jack. And depending on what happens with Raekwon, he's teetering on the edge with four personal fouls. Ballantyne's night is not done. But a couple of big threes plus five rebounds for the sophomore. 
Sharks having a tough time from three. Clark right away waits. A lot of bodies converging. And he got poked in the eye. That was Obi Noel who got the last piece of him. Clark hesitated way too long. I think he was shocked to see all that room in the paint. Had he just caught it and gone up, he would have been just fine. Another missed free throw. The Sharks have attempted nine fewer than the River Hawks. But more could be coming. UMass Lowell with nine, LIU with four. Both coaches have their three timeouts. Gantz is out there with four for the Riverhawks. That's something to monitor as well. Agosto having a tough time with Lutete. But really, I think if you put anybody on him tonight, it would be an issue. A career-high 37 for Christian. Gantz with a triple. It's pure. And the lead is back to five. Three-point shooting has favored the Riverhawks. Both teams have knocked down seven. But UMass Lowell's attempted six fewer. Flowers can't get it to go down. And a whistle in the backcourt. Julian Batts got a little handsy. After Flowers missed his ninth three-pointer. When the Sharks are attacking the inside, they're plus six in the paint, 34 to 28. But Clark can't really get aggressive right now. Era Penn's unavailable. And so you got to go with a more guard heavy rotation. Riverhawks. Noel rejected by Clark, got his own rebound. There he is again, Lutete with 39. And it's the largest lead of the second for the Riverhawks. Coming up on the final five. Clark. Knocked out last by the Riverhawks. And I think Lutete was the second or third one in line. And before the inbounds, here comes Vershawn Cotton. Takes over for the first-year player, Jermaine Jackson. Ian Ballantyne, teammates at Detroit Mercy. Lutete on bats, gives him a little room. Poked it away, forced the turnover. 13th one against LIU. Lutete spots up. He is automatic. It's a 42-point performance from Christian Lutete. He has single-handedly tormented the Sharks. And the lead is 10 with just under five minutes to play. Christian Lutete shattering his previous career high of 35 with a 42-point performance. And still close to five minutes left here in the second half. An 8-0 run for the Riverhawks. And one more media timeout coming up. The Sharks trying to find something. And maybe their best bet right now is to force it inside and hit a couple of free throws because they've taken 28 three-pointers in the ball game and only knocked down seven. Ty Flowers in particular just one of ten. And Bats usually pretty reliable there. Raquan Clark only has three points in this second half after picking up his fourth foul early. Bats now down, gripping his right foot. And walking off to the side. Looks like he's all right. Bradley takes over for now. We've seen Julian blow a couple of tires throughout the course of his career. Just making sure that the sneaker's done up the right way and fastened in. 
It's really been Lutete and nobody else. Even Noel has slowed down considerably in this second half. He's only got two. And underneath it looked like a ghost though got jostled up with Alan Blunt. Jay Sean's first personal, number six against LIU. They keep trying a ghost though on Lutete. Riverhawks starting to take time off the clock. And one too many steps from Connor Withers. Riverhawks hadn't turned it over in quite some time. That's just their third in the half, 10th overall. And now Bats quickly re-enters with Ashton Bradley gripping his left leg. I think something locked up on Ashton. He's cramping a bit. Augusto looking. Flowers. Trying to control. And the Sharks give it right back. Three fifty-five left in the second. Riverhawks trying to close it out. The last three minutes and fifty-five seconds when we come back on NEC front row. With a one and one coming for Christian Lutete. He's in the midst of a career high forty-two points. He's eight of nine at the free throw line. And he couldn't have hit the first one much better. Riverhawks led by three at the break. 74-64, their largest lead. It's back to 10. And now the Sharks need to start pressing a bit. They need buckets. They need stops. And they need them quickly. They set the play for Cotton. Clark got back to it and heads to the line. Raquan Clark, after that brilliant start to the game, he made his first eight shots. Has only attempted three field goals in the second half. That's what four fouls does to you. LIU could have made things a little bit more interesting if not for five missed free throws in this second half. They could have cut the deficit down the middle. And now they go back to that full court press, which really helped them out for the first two and a half minutes. They double Noel. Cotton goes for it. Swipe to Lutete. Noel goes up, and the defense got soft underneath. Bradley hits his first three. Maybe that's the first one. Cotton hands again. He got that one. Augusto waits, Augusto goes up, and LIU wanted the foul. It doesn't matter, five straight points. It's now a six-point game. Can the Riverhawks hang on? Lutete, not a good shot. Should have taken more time off the 30. Instead, here comes LIU. Clark calls for it, running out of room, and throws it away to Lutete. The entry feed from Agosto wasn't the best. And the Sharks give it away for the 15th time. Lutete beats him. Cotton was a little too overeager. 44 points for Lutete. 
Eric Kellogg with a couple of timeouts. Pat Duquette with three. Flowers, one touch. So many of those have gone around. They've been great looks. Flowers just can't believe it. He is now one of 12 from downtown. Now yeah, take one off, one of 11 either way. Bradley stops play with his third foul. And the Riverhawks can start to close it out at the free throw line. Vershawn comes off. Bats back in. A one and one for Noel. Look at that. Connor Withers to the rebound. And Withers clenching his fist realizes that that was one of the biggest plays of the night. The Sharks need to foul. They just need to make sure that it's not Clark. They're moving slow. Lutete lets it rip for 49 points. A night to remember for Christian Lutete. Bradley can't connect. And Withers rips it down. It's an 11-point deficit with a little more than a minute to go. The Riverhawks are about to finish it off. A 49-point performance for Christian Lutete. 16 makes, 7 from downtown. And it might be the single best performance at Division I for a Riverhawk. John Paganetti scored 46 against New Hampshire College. But that was back in 1981. We'll have to double check, but I don't think a Riverhawk has ever had the type of night that Christian Lutete's had. He's got 49 points. Noel was right there with him, but Noel's only got four in this second half. Down. And I think tonight that's where Era Penn's absence looms large because they tried a ghosto on Lutete. That didn't work. And every time Christian touched it, it was just his night. You expected it to go down. Look at that. A rebound in traffic for Blunt. And with the final minute clock running down, the Riverhawks are about to wrap it up. Sharks giving away 18 offensive rebounds. For the first time in three years under Derek Kellogg, a Division I opponent for the home opener. The last two years, it was the College of New Rochelle. LIU had gone 11-2 in home openers since 2006. It's going to be their first loss here at the Wellness Center in a home opener since New Hampshire in 2014. They had one other one during that 13-year stretch where they lost at the Barclays, but... This was a game that was tight for a good chunk of this second half. But the Riverhawks just proved to be too much. A man at the line, Lutete, has 50 points. And you could probably sit him for Sunday against Ohio State. And he'd still be the America East player of the week. How about rebound number nine? I shortchanged him by one. He's got 51. Either way, he might never have another game like this. It doesn't matter because he'll remember this night forever. Christian Lutete's previous high in a Red Hawks, or excuse me, a River Hawks uniform was 35 points. And tonight he has lapped the field with 51. 
in which I believe, according to the game notes, is the highest scoring game for a River Hawks player. Augusto to the rack for an easy deuce. Derek Kellogg calls one of his remaining two timeouts. And here's what's coming up. And then their last three games in non-conference to close out the 2019 portion of the calendar. We'll start on December 20th. That's our next broadcast when they're home against Delaware. So a lot of games between now and then. The Riverhawks go to Columbus for a game against number 18 Ohio State on Sunday. After that, an eight-game homestand, something that in his entire coaching career, Pat Duquette has never had that amount of games in a row at home. And he said that aside from the trip out to Columbus, he's really looking forward to getting his guys at home for a good chunk of their non-conference schedule. So last year when they set the D1 program record with eight non-conference wins, through two in the 2019 season, they'll be one and one. The Sharks will fall to 0 and two. And hopefully better days ahead for the Sharks defense and the Sharks defensive rebounding. Jackson just firing away. Deem trying to elbow in there for the rebound with Withers. River Hogs ball with the possession arrow and with an unlucky 13 point deficit. No point in the Sharks fouling at this point. Lutete is going to dribble it out. A game for the ages for Christian Lutete. 51 points and nine rebounds. And for the second time in three seasons, the River Hawks defeat LIU. Your final in the 2019 home opener for the Sharks, 87 to 74. And the all-time series is now split down the middle, two and two for LIU and UMass Lowell. And the Sharks get 21 points from Raekwon Clark, 19 from Ty Flowers, had more than the six players dressed like they did on Tuesday night against URI. But even with all those healthy bodies, just couldn't overcome the 51 points from Christian Lutete as they lose just their third home opener in the last 14 years. So that's the final from the Steinberg Wellness Center. The River Hawks win it 87-74. to My thanks to Pat Duquette for spending a few minutes on the phone today. Best of luck to UMass Lowell, what I think could be a very...